Did you know that high dose steroids like dexamethasone can worsen the diabetes control and increase the glucose? This is a five step guide for hyperglycemia and diabetes management in patients who are on high dose steroid therapy like dexamethasone. Step one is to assess the baseline diabetes status. This can be done by looking at the three risk markers for hyperglycemia, HbA1c more than 48 millimoles per mole, random glucose more than 12 millimoles per liter, or prior history of any type of diabetes. Step two is hyperglycemia risk stratification. This is based on the answer to these three questions. If the answer is yes to any one of these three questions, then the patient is categorized as high risk of steroid-induced hyperglycemia. Majority of these patients will end up on insulin. If the answer is no to all these three questions, the risk of steroid-induced hyperglycemia still exists. However, it is mild to moderate. All these patients would need closer monitoring of glucose and some of them may require therapy initiation, which could be self myelurious or insulin, depending on the glucose levels. Remember that patients admitted to hospital with COVID-19 infection as well as poorly controlled diabetes or uncontrolled hyperglycemia are likely to have poor outcomes. Dexamethasone being used for management of COVID-19 patients is likely to induce hyperglycemia, which may require intervention in form of insulin or sulfonylureas. Steroid-induced hyperglycemia is likely to be missed if monitoring is done with just fasting glucose levels because the effects are more pronounced during the evening or after meal. So step three is to have a glucose monitoring strategy. All patients falling into the high risk strategy for steroid induced hyperglycemia must have a glucose check before and after each meal and at bedtime. Patients falling into mild to moderate risk category should also have a closer monitoring of their glucose when they are on high dose steroid therapy. This may include a minimum of four blood glucose checks in a day. Step four is setting glycemic targets. While monitoring the glucose, the key step is to ensure we avoid hypoglycemia at all costs. The acceptable blood glucose levels could be between six to 10 millimoles per liter for ITU slash HTU patients or four to 12 millimoles per liter for ward based setting. Any patients who has type 1 diabetes and has a blood glucose level more than 14 should have a repeat check within one hour and ketone monitoring policy should be followed. Step 5. Initiating or modifying glucose lowering therapy. High risk patients can fall into one of the two categories. The first category are those who are not on insulin. They may have known type 2 diabetes or they may have newly diagnosed diabetes. The second category are those who are already on insulin. This could be both type one or type two. If you have a patient with type two diabetes who is not on insulin, or it is a newly diagnosed diabetes, then they may need to be started on insulin immediately if their initial capillary blood glucose is more than 18 millimoles per liter. They can be started on humulin M3 at breakfast time at a dose of 0.2 units per kilogram and the dose can be increased on a daily basis by one or two units to achieve the target glucose levels. If the levels are not achieved, please contact the diabetes inpatient service. If you have a patient who is not on insulin and their glucose is high due to high dose steroids, but the capillary blood glucose on initial check is below 18 millimoles per liter, they can be started on glycoside 80 milligrams before breakfast. Up titrate the dose by 40 milligrams every day until target glucose levels are achieved or the maximum dose of glycoside has been achieved. Contact the diabetes inpatient service if targets not achieved. For someone who is already on insulin, the management plan will depend on the type of insulin and the timing of insulin. 
But those who are on once daily basal insulin, they have to switch the basal insulin to morning time and increase the dose by 10 to 20%. For someone who is on twice daily mixed insulin injections, you increase the morning dose of insulin by 10 to 20% and keep increasing it depending on the pre-breakfast glucose levels. You may need to add a lunchtime mixed insulin dose if the blood glucose after the lunch or before the dinner are high. Contact the dips if uncertain. For someone who is on multiple daily insulin injections, Change the timing of basal insulin to morning and increase the bolus insulin at lunchtime and before evening meal by 10 to 20 percent on a daily basis to achieve target glucose levels. Patients who do not have diabetes are still at risk of steroid induced hyperglycemia and continue to monitor their glucose as per step 3 and if target glucose not met and start them on glycolazide or insulin depending on their initial glucose levels. Bear in mind, COVID-19 patients may not respond to sulfonylureas and may require to be started on insulin therapy from the start. This concludes the five-step guide towards hyperglycemia management and high dose steroid therapy. Step one, assess the baseline diabetes status. Step two, hyperglycemia risk stratification. Step three, glucose monitoring strategy. Step four, setting glycemic targets. Step five, initiating or modifying glucose lowering therapy. Please do not hesitate to contact the Diabetes Inpatient Service for further advice.